Florida man is suing police for being arrested after they alleged that he had stolen his own car. So on Wednesday, the Miami New Times reported that Samuel Scott Jr. is filing a lawsuit for an incident that had happened back in 2018. So now Scott is suing the city of Miami and five different officers, Jonathan Guzman, Michael Bloom, Brandon Williams, Miguel Hernandez, and Randy Cariel, alleging that they had unlawfully searched, falsely imprisoned, and maliciously prosecuted him on that day in June of 2018, reported Alex DeLuca. Scott's attorney, Faudlin Pierre, tells the New Times that his client is seeking $500,000 in damages. So what happened? What happened? So on June 1st, 2018, uh, 44-year-old Scott um, had, Samuel Scott, had called 911 to report his car stolen. So he had a 2000 Jeep, uh, I'm sorry, 2006 Jeep Compass, and it was stolen from outside of his aunt's house in Buena Vista. Now, roughly about a half hour after the report, Scott was arrested by the Miami Police Department officers he had called to report the theft. Insanity. The details, of course, when you get into them, are even worse, uh, including the dash cam, uh, I'm sorry, not dash cam, but uh, officer cam footage that I will show you later. Uh, now, the details here, uh, around 5.40 p.m., Scott had left his aunt's house after a quick visit and noticed that his Jeep was gone. According to Scott's arrest report, MPD officer Jonathan Guzman spotted the Jeep Compass driving 20 miles an hour over the speed limit just a few miles away. You know, likely, well, because it was stolen. And the guy's like, I gotta get away. <laughs> Gone, I just stole this car, gotta go. Now, Guzman attempted to stop the vehicle when it hit another vehicle. Uh, so already, that's a, an accident uh, that could have gotten people hurt or killed. Uh, and then the driver fled on foot. Now that driver was described as a black male, bald, about 6'2", and heavy set, wearing a white tank top. Very important, very important details here, uh, because cops are supposed to remember the details. Like, example, what they're wearing. So now, Scott had filed a, uh, had filled out a stolen vehicle affidavit after the cops arrived. Uh, now, they had arrived and began interrogating him, basically accusing him of stealing his own vehicle. Now, in fact, as he was filling out that affidavit, an officer had warned him that he would be arrested for filing a false report. Now, wait, okay. So why would you stage the theft of your own car and then call the police? That makes absolutely no sense, especially knowing how the police treat black men in America. Now, according to the complaint, the officer also asked Scott if his car had been repossessed. No. Uh, another pulled out a taser, ready to use it. I'll show you that in the video. Uh, but going to what he was wearing. Now, uh, Scott was wearing a black shirt over a white undershirt, not a tank top. And by the way, is four inches shorter than the suspect's description, 5'8". I'm sorry, not 5 in. No. Uh, 5 10. Sorry, I don't know how to do uh, that very easily, very well. Uh, math is hard. Numbers are hard. Okay. Uh, now, the arrest report states that the person reporting the stolen vehicle matched the description of the offender that fled the scene of the hit and run. Upon arrival, the complainant was wearing the same clothing description. Now, I'm going to show you the body cam footage uh, and of how Mr. Scott was treated reporting a stolen vehicle, his stolen vehicle. Yeah, that's him. He's, he's, sorry, he's sweating. He has, he has a, a black shirt on top of the tan top shirt that he had when he was driving. Put your hands behind your back of him. Put your hands behind your back of him. 432. 432. I'm going to explain to you in a minute. Where's your ID? Right there. You're going to take all your stuff? We can't take this? I'm telling you guys that I can confirm where I was and I can even confirm my activities.
I just recently it's logged off of the VPN of my job. Okay. At what time? Roughly before I came over here, before I called you guys. Okay. But I'm telling you, you guys got the wrong guy. Okay. The description of the car, of the guy that took off from your car is just like yours. But that's half of Miami. Ball headed okay. with a beard. Uh, even if he had dreads, it dreads with a beard. Okay. But then that's it's not fair. I mean, like like I said, my kids, I called because my car got stolen. My kids are over there. They don't even know what's so going on. So what time was your car stolen? I told you, probably around about five. I didn't pay attention to the time. I really just jumped out of the car to go see. That's it. If you want, like I said, we can go. Like, I had my kids and stuff like that. Dropped them off. Came over to, to say hi. And I went, I mean, I don't know what happened. I don't. I mean, like I said, I know the people that stay across there, over here, all over the place. I don't know what happened. My car just, somebody jumped in, drove off. And I'm sorry, but I'm telling you, I didn't, I didn't do it. I mean, literally, I, I mean, why would I call the police? <laughs> I mean, I called because my car is stolen. I mean, I, how me and my kids are going to get home? My pillow, my, my work ID, my work stuff, all of that stuff is in there. Why would I... That's why I'm like, what, what's, why am I in handcuffs? If I'm calling them and, and, and I'm, also, I don't know if you know, or at least in my record, I've never been arrested. You know, one, of my, one of my, one of mine is, like, CD Miami, Dennis Jackson, he used to be my pastor. An unsuretired CD of Miami police officer. You've never been arrested before? No. You sure about that? Yeah. Never been arrested. Ex-military, never been arrested. What's the last for your social? Never been arrested before. Oh, oh, are you sure? Yes, motherfucker, I'm sure. I would know if I was arrested before. Thank you. Look, this guy... I mean... Look, this guy has been uh, treated with disrespect after disrespect. I, I mean, this guy was not only victimized once by having his car stolen, but then victimized by the police. The people who are supposed to help him, or uh, allegedly supposed to help him. Insane. Insane. And again, you can literally look it up to see if he has been arrested before, which he has not. And that said, doesn't even matter. Shouldn't even matter. It was his car. And it got stolen. Why? And he even asked the question. He's like, why would I, why would I steal my own car? And then call the cops. That doesn't make any sense. That doesn't make any sense. What are you doing? What are you doing? And by the way, uh, it, it, just, it doesn't matter, apparently, that he was wearing something different. No, no, they all look the same. They all look the same. And I also love the comment. I, I don't know if you got, uh, caught it back there, but at the beginning, he says, oh, yeah, he's sweating. It's Florida. Everybody's sweating in Florida. Everyone. Jesus, you, you think cops were suppo were, are supposed to know these details, but no, all they see when he's black. He had to have done something wrong. Oh, and by the way, it gets worse because they actually tried to hit him with several things, even though he didn't actually do anything and he was the one victimized here. Oh, all right. In fact, according to the arrest report, the officers claimed that they found pla four plastic baggies in Scott's car that had green spots with suspected marijuana. Oh, of course they did. Oh, oh, look at that. We've got pot. Oh, ho, ho, drug charge. Got him. Nailed it. Please. Now, they also, by the way, uh, so, so this guy... Scott has, has, a, has a concealed carry permit. So he's armed. He's, he has his, keeps his gun in his car. And he also keeps his permit in the car with the gun. So now he was, according to the police report, Scott was charged with leaving the scene of an accident, false reporting of a crime, failed to carry a concealed weapon license, and possession of marijuana. All of the charges, by the way, were eventually dropped by the Miami-Dade State Attorney's Office because there was nothing, nothing there. Uh, Mr. Scott is a military veteran. He has a legal concealed carry weapon permit. There was no issue there. None. None. 
And again, the marijuana charge, he's still trying to figure out like, wait, what? 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 Where did you come up with the marijuana charge? I, it, ridiculous. Again, it was all dropped because it wasn't actually marijuana. But they knew. They knew they messed up. They had to charge him with something. And so they tried. Didn't work out. Oh, yeah, they, 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 oh, they sure are hiring their best, aren't they? Jesus Christ. But no, obviously, false arrest. Now, Scott's lawsuit was filed on November 13th. And his lawyer, Fauden, uh, Fauden and Pierre, noted that no one else had been arrested for stealing and crashing Scott's car. Again, this guy has his car stolen, crashed. They didn't even go after the, the guy who did it, but went after him instead. And look, uh, I've, I've heard the stories of, like, people that are report their car stolen, and the cops are just like, yeah, yeah, I'll, we'll get to it. Mm, yeah, sure, it's one of these days. And they just never do. I mean, so, no, he's, he's never going to get that back. He's never going to get any sort of restitution for what happened. Okay, and, and yes, he, he did get his car back because they found his car because it, it was crashed. But... Now, you know, look, uh, hopefully he's got a better car now, or if he wins, he get a way better car. Now, the city of Miami also didn't respond to emailed questions from the New Times asking whether anyone uh, else was charged in connection with the incident. Uh, and all five officers, at least according to the MPD roster, are still on the force. They're still working. They're still doing their doing their job, you know, no problem. Now, Pierre says, hey, it'd be nice for Scott to at least get an apology from these officers, but then knows that that likely will not happen, because of course. And, and so as a result, they know, look, we're just going to get, we're just going to seek compensation, and that's it. Uh, in fact, Pierre says this, yes, we want justice, but in the form of him being compensated, that's the only way our legal system actually provides any remedies. And that is so incredibly true. Again, for me, <laughs> open and shut. This guy's going to win. Uh, but this is another example of if there was not video evidence and if there was not an outrage, if there, you know, people weren't paying attention to what cops were doing, they might have gotten away with it. This is policing in America. This is what happens. If only we could, you know, maybe do something about horrible policing in this country. But it turns out uh, that all that reform, do you remember when we had so much talk about, oh, we're going to reform the cops, we're going to reform the cops. Uh, yes, we're going to make cops better. Uh, oops, uh, all that turned out to be complete hot air. No one has done a goddamn thing to ensure that police stop racially profiling. And the fact that these officers are still on the job with zero repercussions well shows that this kind of what we consider to be bad policing for them isn't bad at all <laughs> this isn't the bug it's the feature totally acceptable 100 percent. we love what these police officers are doing says the city of miami and it's probably the most outrageous thing about this entire case is the fact that no one will be held accountable it, it won't even come out of the police officers' pockets, their pensions, their budget, nothing. And so these officers will continue to do the same goddamn thing to the next poor black guy who gets in their way. Disgusting. If you enjoyed this video, please give us a like and share with your friends. You can subscribe and help out the channel by becoming a patron. It's patreon.com slash Jeff Waldorf. Or you can become a channel member as well by hitting the join button below.